How does a perfumer actually go about making the stuff? Well, you don't go down the garden, pick rose petals and squeeze them. That doesn't happen. What you do is buy rose absolute or rose essential oil from Bulgaria or Morocco, where they pick rosebuds by the million, and then it takes a ton of rose petals to make one litre of the lovely essential oil or absolute. So you buy the raw materials. Um, for example, here I've got I've got pure vetiver, that's made from a very fragrant smoky grass. I would dilute that down to 10% to work with it. Um, so 10% by volume is about the right strength to work in putting together my ideas. Um, this is diluted in perfumer's alcohol. Uh, there are raw materials which are synthetic as well. This one's ISO E Super, which is kind of famously being released by itself as, oh, you know, supposedly this magical pheromone molecule. No, all, all, all mythology, let's call it. But ISO E Super, you can add that to a perfume that's got lots of naturals in it, which will always smell a bit too dense and heavy. I think it's kind of magical lightness to it. Um, this one, one of my favourites. This is pixelized. It's, kind of, it's a musky scent because we don't use natural musk because that is just poorly thing to do to animals. So all musk fragrances, well, unless you're really cruel, but if you like your animals, you'd use a, a synthetic musk. Everybody has for the last what, 60, 70 years. So that one you dilute in alcohol. Um, so I mean, it's very, very easy to make rubbish scents. You can just bung a load of stuff in. I mean, there are millions of combinations, thousands of different materials, millions of different combinations. You get it wrong, it might still smell okay, but it's, oh, it's just working out exactly the quantities which will just make something perfect. Uh, okay, that's the hard bit. Um, so, yes, I then blend those to get, like I showed you, the, the work in progress. Um, and so I make a very small quantity of those, then leave them for two weeks, four weeks for them to macerate because you can't use them fresh. It's like drinking whiskey a week after you put it into a barrel. They've got to mature. After that, then maybe I would make a larger amount, test it on a few people, see what they think. I say test, obviously they have oh, the regulations, have to stick to safety regulations, which are that's the murderous part. It's not all fun. You can't just mix it all up, take it down the shops and sell it. No. Regulations are tricky. But that all sorted, making sure that I've got the correct quantities for the EU to be happy, then I can make a litre of it. Again, I would leave that for a while to macerate until it's just about right, you know, four weeks, six weeks. So it's not a quick thing. Can't make you a perfume in an afternoon and expect it to smell the same in a few weeks time. But after about four to six weeks, then it will be ready. But, so it's not just blending lovely things. I brought my calculator because it's an awful lot of maths. It's also an awful lot of precision set of scales to measure things out in small quantities of, of grams, of milligrams, to make sure the quantities are correct each time. And I also, I brought the flute with me because I trained as a musician, early life, and there's something about perfumery which for me is a lot like music. Um, you've got individual notes, individual materials. You put them together to make chords. You put one wrong note in there and it can just smell awful. The same way as if you make a mistake on the piano keyboard, it smells, it smells. It sounds dreadful. I mix the two up. So, uh, there's a lot going on in perfumes to get something that's really lovely. And what I need is time to make these blends. So, what I'm asking for is for you to join in in advance. You'll have the advantage of much lower prices than when they hit the website and hit shops. And you'll have something that's hardly anyone else is going to have. 